Hi everyone! So today I'll be doing some sewing. I haven't done a sewing video in a while, so I'm kind of excited for it. We're having a really dark and rainy and kind of stormy day today, and I thought it's a perfect day to just work inside and do something like this. Although I don't like to use artificial lights, but I kind of have to today, so excuse the lighting. I had this stack of jeans lying around. There are actually some that John doesn't wear anymore. Um, I think we had accidentally gotten a size that was too short, like the legs are too short. So he never wore them much uh, because of that, but they're not you know, worn and tattered or anything. I thought about donating them, but then I began thinking of things that I could actually make with them. I don't have any patterns or anything, so I'm just gonna kinda wing it and come up with a few little projects that I, uh, actually things that I thought I could you know, use for myself. And I thought I'd share it with you guys Take you with me as I work on them. What I have in front of me here is of course the denim and then I have some other fabrics that I found just around here that I thought really go well with denim so I may end up you know incorporating some of that into my projects. So join me as I work on all this and enjoy. So the first thing I'm going to make here or try to is a chef's apron and I thought when I eyed these pants here I thought it almost has a shape already like in here is where you know your arm would be and then the tie for the apron it almost has that shape already I'm not sure is this going to work out or not but i'm going to go ahead and just cut along there uh, use you know both of these uh, pieces here like the back pieces and see if i can somehow you know sew them together then like in the in the middle here and kind of create a little apron of sorts i think a denim apron would be really handy uh, to have sometimes maybe even out in the workshop and a heavy duty fabric. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the belt just in case I need that for my strings. I don't want, really want to cut it uh, you know, apart like back here. I want to leave it all in one piece. I'm going to try to save this tag here. I think that would look uh, pretty on maybe on the apron or on some of my other projects that I'm making. I kind of like to see the brown tag. So at first I thought I might be able to use, you know, this section here as my apron front, uh, kind of for the arms, you know, and then going down. But now that I have them cut out, these two back pieces, I see that it's way too wide through here. So I think what I'll do is remove the pockets and then sew these pieces together and maybe just have one center pocket after I have my seam in here. Usually once you get them started, you can just tear them off. Now I have my two back pieces here all cut apart with the pockets off and before I do any sewing I've learned in the past it's always a good idea to just use pins kind of create a seam where you think your seam would be and then you can see if it looks right before actually sewing it. The first thing I'm sewing here is the sides of that top piece. I 
feel like I'm probably not the best at explaining step by step what I'm doing here, but I'll do my best. As you can see, I put the side seams in and then I sewed the two pieces together, putting a seam down the middle and my seam got really wide here and I'll be cutting some of the fabric off. But my next step here is putting a top stitch along or down the middle here and I could get really fancy and use gold thread. I think that would be really nice with um, being that, you know, the thread up here is gold like jeans are. But I don't think I have any on hand right now, so I'll just use my dark blue thread that I'm using. And what I plan to do is actually cut to this part off here. This would be the top part of the apron then, and I'll probably end up putting a pocket or something uh, in the middle. And then I have an idea here to use the belt part, um, kind of like this. And then I will have the bottom part here to sew onto the belt. And the reason I'm doing this is if I pull this pin out here, you can see the seam comes apart like a lot more than up here. That way I have more fabric to provide me with a little bit of a wider apron down here. Um, I can't really explain it here in the video, but if I were to just you know, keep this tapered down, like the depth of the seam here, kind of taper it down, all the way you know down here my apron just tends to get more narrow as it comes down here it's the shape of those legs so I think being that I put this you know belt in here I'm able to actually cut off the top piece you know sew that onto the belt and then put the bottom piece in separately and it'll actually come out just a little bit wider I've talked about the sewing machine before here on my channel I was gifted this by one of you guys and I always feel when I use it, I think of you. I don't even know who you are, but thank you again. I have really, really enjoyed this machine. Um, things like this just blow me away. Nowadays, you know, you hear so much bad things out there. I always feel like you don't hear the good things enough because there is a lot of good out there. Um, that was just one little example, and it was big for me, trust me, but um, the world is filled with so many good people. So the fun part with this apron so far has been to kind of decorate it. Um, I was able to use um, the inside of the belt here. I turned that to the outside so my white lettering would be on here. And then of course the tag here, I think that adds character. As you can see, I sewed a big pocket onto the front here. That was that, Then I was able to cover up the um, where the fabric was a different color from the hip pockets. And I like the frayed look of the pocket here. And then along with the strings, I just have the raw edges exposed. I think that adds character. And then for the top part here, I just use the section of the belt where the buttonhole is. That way I can have an adjustable apron. I can just pull this through and make a knot, you know, wherever I want my uh, neck strap to be at. And I even kept the belt loop. I thought that kind of added character too. For this side, the button is actually on the other side, but I kind of like to see the, the rivet. The last thing I want to do here is add some pockets onto the front. And I wanted to mention the size apron that I ended up making here is pretty small, um, using a size 34-32 jeans. And if you were wanting to make anything bigger, you'd probably need to add another pair of pants and maybe put another section in, like the bottom part of the apron, if that makes sense. Last night I made a hot pad that turned out pretty good, so I'll go ahead and show you the process on exactly how I made it. And I'm sure there's other ways of doing this, but this is kind of what I came up with. First of all, I don't have any heat resistant batting or whatever you put inside a hot pad, so I'm just using an old one here. And this one is really old. I'm pretty sure it's one that we got as a gift uh, when we got married. So it has seen its better days but I thought it would still function quite well to be you know, heat resistant. So I just cut my two pieces of fabric, denim and this pretty linen. I thought it goes really well together. And I also cut a inch and a half binding that goes out around the hot pad. And often I don't mess with pins, but in this case, it's a lot easier to pin everything in place before sewing it. When I started out by putting this binding on, I left about a half inch that I didn't sew on. That way I have something to connect my other end with. So hopefully you can tell here in the video, but I have my 
uh, binding here where I started out. I have this little piece here that I didn't, uh, you know, sew onto the, the fabric. So I'm then able to sew the end of the binding here uh, together and create a seam. Now for the next part, I want to pin everything in place. The last step in finishing the hot pad is just sewing the binding on and making sure my needle is in the ditch of the seam. That way you can't see the thread on the linen side. On the other side you'll be able to see it but it's fine. And I also want to add a loop to hang it up. I didn't get a video of that but I just used a belt loop for that. The next thing I want to try to make here is a bag and again with no pattern or anything to go by I'm just guessing uh, this might not even turn out but I'm going to take the jeans apart, cut the belt off, remove the tag and then cut the leg pieces apart. So with the bottom of the legs here I have a decent sized rectangle. First thing I'm doing here is sewing the pieces together. So now my two pieces are sewed together on three sides. Uh, this would be the bottom of the bag here, and this is of course the top. And for my seam here, I wanted to have this seam here, like the original uh, seam that was on the, the blue jeans. I wanted that to be kind of the front of the bag, so I made sure instead of having this, you know, on the side for a side seam. I actually have it, you know, for the front seam here. I haven't done this in years. I think I can still remember how to do it, but I wanna create kind of a bottom to my tote bag. So what I do is I take a corner and kind of pinch the sides in like this. And I try to match my seams, like this seam here and the one on the other side, just by feeling, I can kind of feel like they're together. So what I want to do is kind of create a triangle. I would actually put a seam in through here. Um, if I put it out further towards the tip of my triangle, my bottom will be more narrow, but I want to try to find, you know, the, the size I want my bottom to be, and that is how far in I will be sewing here. And I'll go ahead and sew it and then show it to you. It might make more sense. So here I made my seam on both of these bottom corners. And I probably should have measured, you know, to make sure everything is nice and even, but just a bag for myself, I didn't bother. And the next thing I want to do here is line this bag. And I have this really pretty fabric, but I don't have a lot of it. And I really want this fabric to show like on the inside, I think it would look so good with, you know, this denim. So I'll probably just have enough to maybe line the top part of the bag, and then the rest of the bag I'll probably just line with either a plain white fabric. I don't think I have plenty of denim because I wanted to save the rest of my denim for my next project. Uh, so being that, you know, you're not really going to see it anyway, I'll probably just use some sort of a white fabric, thinking maybe an old pillowcase or something. And ideally, I should have cut this fabric the same time that I cut my outer part, uh, just to get my measurements right. Uh, but I think if I turn it inside out, I can kind of guess on how big to make the liner. And what I have here is basically just another bag with the same measurements, kind of sewn the same way. I also did those corners. So before I sew this liner into the bag, I'm gonna go ahead and add an inside pocket, maybe like a phone pocket, because I won't be able to access this area once it's sewed in. So I'll probably use this small pocket that is kind of inside the, 
pocket on the jeans here for one of the pockets and maybe one of the back pockets, not quite sure. I didn't get a video of this, but I sewed a big pocket on the front here, uh, put a seam down the middle so it's not just one huge pocket, but two, you know, smaller ones. So as I'm holding this lining to my, you know, outer part, I think I'm going to go another route to put it, you know, sew it in here. Um, instead of just sewing it, you know, on the top, I really like the clean look of just not seeing any thread on there. So what I think I'll do is open up a seam in the bottom and turn it inside out and sew it on that way. Then I can just turn it, you know, stuff it back in and just close my seam in here and I'll have a nice clean look along the top. Now I have my lining in here and I'm ready to add the straps. And I ended up cutting up another pair of pants for the one strap because I needed another belt. So I think what I'll do is sew the one side, leaving the button on there. I kind of like that look. And I might end up adding this little tag here um, along this side. I saw an image on Pinterest where they did that and I kind of like that look. I'm using a zigzag stitch for these straps. What I plan to make next is a throw of sorts. I'm always cold, so this would be for myself. I thought the heavy weight of denim combined with a nice soft fabric would be perfect. Maybe one that I would use while sitting around the fire. We do a lot of that, especially in the fall time. Here I'm cutting squares out of the rest of my stash of jeans. And the measurement is 6 and 3 fourth inch square. And then I have an old duvet cover that I plan to use for my kind of like the lining or the backing. And that is almost like a flannel, just a nice soft warm fabric. Right now Pebbles is enjoying it. I think my rows of squares are going to be 8 by 10, like 8 squares by 10 squares. I want it to be like a rectangle shape. I'm going to sew those together and I think I'll turn my seams on the outside. I kind of like that look of a rag blanket. I had to bribe Pebbles and Twinkle with some food so they'd stay off of my fabric. Uh, they just love that if I work on the floor like this. So cute. I got John to help me kind of stretch the denim squares so that I would make, you know, the correct size cut into my fabric. I pinned the top and the bottom together, making sure everything was nice and even. 
I didn't get a video of it, but I sewed along the edge of the blanket, just making sure everything was held in place. And then I sewed every other row of squares, I sewed into the ditch of the seam, uh, kind of like a quilt stitch would be, uh, just to again hold the pieces together. For the binding that comes along the edge to finish it off, I just used strips of the duvet cover. I was able to tear those into the correct size. I used the exact same method to bind this blanket as I did for the pot holders. I'm so impressed with the blanket so far. Even at this stage, I can feel it's just going to be that perfect weight, uh, all cozy and soft on the inside. I also plan to wash it. That way my raw edges that are exposed on the top will get nice and frayed. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe it gave you a few ideas of something you could do uh, to use up old jeans. Uh, it was fun for me to do some sewing again and such a good feeling to be able to make some things that I can actually use and I didn't have to go buy them. As always, I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!